spanning the globe to bring your customers a constant variety of top-rated services. The human drama of service competition, providing team members the skills and tools to work together with customers, sales, and systems engineers, to experience the thrill of victory, and to deal with the agony of Argus. This is Data General Field Engineering's Wide World of Service. And now your host for the Wide World of Service Olympics preview and the coach of the Worldwide Data General Service Team, Dick Camuso. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is you were right, Carter. Carter told me to greet TV stars with thundering rounds of applause and standing ovations. And I was just waiting. You must admit, though, I did outdo Jim McKay, did I not? <laughs> well, anyway, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this special remote report on the progress of this year's Data General Worldwide Customer Service Team as it prepares for the upcoming 24th Olympiad just a few months away. As we report here from muggy, murky Milford, field service teams around the world are preparing feverishly for yet another assault on worldwide service record books. And we'll be switching to four of our training locations for some live reports on their progress in a moment. Four years ago in Los Angeles, a young, inexperienced, and overmatched squad performed courageously against the giants of those games, the bombers from Big Blue, the Digital Exercise Club, and HP, more affectionately known as Pulitz Hackers. Our team far outclassed, was far outclassed. Success was not measured by the number of medals won, but rather in terms of what a great learning experience this was. And wasn't this a moral victory? And gee, we performed much better than expected. In other words, we got our butt kicked. Eating the dust and bringing up the rear didn't sit too well with the service teams, however. And the entire worldwide organization, some 4,000 strong, across 70 countries and 250 locations, began to develop new training methods and programs under the then recently appointed head coach, Frank Silkman. First, they established some common direction by establishing a team mission, which called for providing quality service and doing it in a timely and efficient manner and consistent with the needs of both customers and employees. Secondly, they recognized that in addition to competition, our business served three other constituencies, our customers, our stockholders, and our employees. And thirdly, they developed goals and objectives for each of its players. First, to attain a level of customer satisfaction equal to industry leaders. Second, to improve the profitability and efficiency for its investors. And thirdly, to maintain a high level of morale for its most precious asset, its people. A renewed life and spirit was instilled into the entire squad. A new breed of service rep was developing, one working side by side with sales at the center court to meet the rapidly changing needs of our customers. Success was being achieved through the aggressive pursuit of new service opportunities, winning new customers by being flexible and light on their feet and ready to provide backup at every opportunity. One learning to cope with DG's faster, more complex, and more reliable hardware, coupled with larger, decentralized, application-sensitive customers. How will the team perform? Well, the final test won't be for another few months or so. But in last year's World Games in West Germany, considered an Olympic tune-up, four years of training and development began to pay dividends. DG service took a backseat to no one. From four years prior, the business had grown to nearly 400 million nearly doubling from 1983, with Europe being contributing at the fastest rate. Efficiency and the resulting profitability also more than doubled, with AFI leading the pack with a five times improvement. And hardware customer sat was closing in on the industry leaders, not yet at number one, but right up there in second and third spot, challenging for the lead. All in all, I think you'd agree it's a very impressive performance but certainly not one that anyone in service is completely satisfied with. Our team knows that the competitive environment is getting tougher, and our coaches and captains are conducting double practice sessions daily, preparing to absorb yet more change, 
to not only meet and react to competition, but to anticipate and lead wherever possible and practical. There are 1988 objectives to establish new world records in business performance and to begin breaking new ground in software support, business offerings, field productivity, and inventory management without any major disruptions to customer SAT or employee morale. Well enough of what took place last year and the platitudes of what might take place in the future. Let's get out and take a first-hand look at how this year's teams are progressing. And for our first report, let's travel to Central Colorado, which is not only the home of our U.S. Olympic Committee, but DG's largest repair and distribution center. Let's shift to our man in Fountain, who will interview Jim Foxworthy, the coach of this year's worldwide distribution and repair team. Thanks, Dick. I'm here with Jim Foxworthy, coach of Field Engineering's Repair and Distribution Team. It's a diverse team that not only uses players from its center in Colorado, but also from centers in Australia, Canada, England, Japan, and Mexico. Jim, you've had some big changes this year. Why don't you tell us about them? Well, we've come through the transition of combining our Swalbank Germany team with our squad in Feltham, England. And we took our squads in Milford and Fountain and brought them together in a new arena out in Colorado. Those were good moves. We practice hard, we've got a new spirit, and we're efficient out there. Take a look at our largest repair team. They've got great steps. These folks can fix 1,200 different parts from PCBs to whole systems, and on a typical day, they're passing about 300 parts down the court. In fact, these players can turn around a part in 24 hours. And they've helped drop the DOA rate of ship parts from about 8% to 2% in the last four years. And with the points scored by our other players from around the world, the future looks great. Fantastic. Let's take a look at some of that action. Boy, look at that pass. Look at that ball move around. The opponents are hitting us with everything they've got. Old revs, burn chips, boards that look like they've exploded, even terminals that have been slam dunked one too many times. But we stay on the offensive. We keep coming back, making the repairs, inspecting, testing, retesting, until we're sure that when we shoot, it's in the hoop. And our players can feed the ball to the forwards in distribution. The team is great in these plays. In practice, we've been preparing and stocking quality parts, both in Fountain and in the field locations worldwide. So when game time arrives, we can go for the layup and deliver the right part to the right place at the right time. We can make the free throw, and we can make the three-point shots in the critical play. We're guaranteed a scoring position with our cut. I'm definitely in the center of the action. Jim, in recent interviews, you've talked about how many of your recent wins are a result of your player's ability to plan ahead, to set the play. Yeah, that's what I call new product planning. We look at product schedules and anticipate what's needed in coming months and years. This puts the team in a position to make those tough baskets, to provide the parts the field's going to need at the customer side. Jim, looks like you've got a winning team here. I think we can expect a gold medal. Now back to you, Dick. Thanks for that excellent update, Jim. I'm sure you could all see how proud Jim is of his team's improvement. As most of you know, Jim's a relative newcomer to the distribution team, having taken over the reins, oh, maybe nine months ago. And he's already making his mark, as many have already experienced, especially the players on the international fronts who are active participants in our Worldwide Logistics Council. I hope you also noted the Fox's earthy attire. I think that tells you that uh, Jim's a bit of a working man's coach while well, not afraid to get his hands dirty, and that's the kind of support that I know that each and every one of you, as well as our customers, are looking forward to in the future. Now, the expertise associated with this group is not unique, as there are many other support elements that also help field service teams stay on top. How? Well, with the best combination of technical and personal skills, handling calls in the field, and backed up by experts in their corner at support locations providing the best service technology and programs from engineering services and customer support centers around the world. Support is just a phone call away. Men, women, and technology on the spot ready to help solve customer problems. 
For example, the Atlanta Support Center receives more than 9,000 calls a week, and 50% of all those calls are flattened without ever dispatching an FE, and 30% of all MB calls are handled in a similar manner. The best record for this remote service arena comes from our land down under. Our, remote, uh, our Australian Remote Assistance Center successfully handled 65% of all calls without dispatching an FE, a really, truly tremendous performance and undoubtedly a major factor in the significant productivity improvement of that business unit. In addition, the UK established a problem determination group that last year solved more than two-thirds of all software calls within a half hour. I'm sure you can see the obvious impact on efficiency and customer SAT from those aggressive remote programs. And I can assure you that all functions are working equally hard to pr provide that productivity knockout punch. Now let's jump into the ring at this point and visit with one of our hard-nosed field forces, a tough team that pulls no punches and always ready to take on the toughest opponents. Standing at ringside is our man, bombastic Bill Bentley, the coach of the U.S. field force, who will interview the managers of this year's gold medal favorite, the F.E. Flash, as he prepares for his bout with dastardly downtime Dan. Bill? Thanks, Dick. There's excitement in the air here. True wrestling fans have waited a long time for real wrestling to show up as an Olympic event, and this is it. We're going to try to get a word with Tom the Bomb Rizik and Jim Killer Considine, manager of this year's gold medal favorite, Flash FE. And here they come now. Tom, Jim, can we have a few words with you? That's Mr. Bomb to you, Buster. Yeah, and I got a few words for you. What do you want? Well, Mr. Bomb, Flash's opponent, Downtime Dan, looks pretty tough out there. We hear he has some pretty sneaky tactics planned for him. Tactics? What tactics? Well, what about his Bulldog Paw Punch, his Argus Crash, and his Dual Viking Body Slam? Those are pretty tough problems to handle. And he's going to need a lot more than fancy footwork out there to keep the customers happy. Are you kidding? This challenger's a wimp. The Flash's record speaks for itself. He's fast, he's efficient. Why, he pulverized the MB10 Mangler in his last match. Mangler don't give us any trouble anymore. Damn right. With the skills we've instilled in the Flash and the support he's got in his corner, like hardware and software experts and remote diagnostics, there's no way he can lose. Well, let's sample some of that action now. Him is top notch. How do you think they prepared Flash FE for the Bulldog and Viking problem? Well, I know they've been working with the Flash on implementing FCOs against the Bulldog approach, which you defend against that quite well. And we pounded in the need to focus on better account management, using this process between sales, systems, field engineering, and the customer to knock out any of those issues that can keep a customer system down for the count. Yeah, and don't forget, he's got the support center continually working to find ways to break those headlocks before they even become a threat to the Flash. In St. Thomas. Thanks, Bill. Well, St. Thomas, it ain't, but the heat is there to make up for it. I almost didn't recognize you, Bill, in, the, in your stylish outfits, you and your partners. Now I understand how hard it is to manage the support center and your, and your support staff. For a while there, it looked like our man was on the ropes, but the flash took all the blows and rolled with the punches and came out on top in true, true DG style. Now, before moving on to our next event, let's take a look behind the scenes at some of the technology that helps our athletes excel. We have six U.S.-based sports technology centers of engineering services who work with counterparts in Europe and Australia to provide all our field teams around the world with the consistent support they require. Technology can take the form of training, tools, techniques, and product support plans, all of which are developed to provide consistent level of worldwide support, and ensuring that all field squads are adequately prepared to deal with the many complex issues confronting our teams. For more on our technology efforts, let's go to Fred Corcoran, head trainer of Worldwide Engineering Services Technology Centers. Fred? Thanks, Dick. Just as Olympic athletes apply data general technology to help reach their full potential, here at the Sports Tech Center, we work to apply technology to help the field team meet and solve their challenges. 
The first thing I'd like to show you is a project we've been working on called Faro. Most sports fans have heard a lot about this project, and I'm happy to say that our athletes are beginning to reap the benefits. Faro allows our team to work under a coordinated delivery process. They no longer have to pull resources from varied locations. All these resources are right here in this package, all combined to keep DG's products running in world-class form. It provides testing and emulation tools and a myriad of database tools, such as our technical information network and the online information service. This allows our team members to cross the finish line in record time. With this, we can seek out those solutions needed to win whenever we see a problem in performance. Over here, we're working with our athletes to determine what can be done before game time to maximize performance. We've created technology to boost the skills of our first string, the people in the customer support centers. We're working with improved remote diagnostics in the US, UK, France, and Australia. And we provided fast access to software problem documentation with such programs as Symptom Fault Fix. This reduces the need for sending our athletes into sudden death situations. Our studies have shown that we can often win the game without dispatching field team members. We can win by dealing with the situation in the fastest possible time and by allowing our field engineers to reach their personal best. And of course, our athletes need training, but they don't always have time to come to our major training site in the US. So we've worked to develop worldwide computer-based training like Project Discovery. This is not an ordinary computer-based course. It's actually interactive, allowing the athlete to see how his moves and quick thinking affect the outcome of the game. And if there's a specific area where an athlete is having trouble, this can focus in on it. It's a great system and a great team. Thanks, Fred. Fred Auerbach had no fear for one of the new coaches coming from our staff. It's really great, though, to see that that kind of know-how is on our side. And I know that Fred's team continues to aggressively develop new tools and support systems that will not only allow our team, that will not allow our teams, rather, to fall behind. As I said earlier, today's players are a new breed. They're more flexible, and they're more innovative. And I think you'll see what I mean in this upcoming event. Here we have a group of athletes, truly international in scope, looking at what customers demand and anticipating what they'll need tomorrow. One that's working to make sure that the team has the right strokes, offerings, and programs to stay competitive. Their goal is to make a splash with customers, not only those who have been longtime fans, but helping to bring in the new ones as well. How do they do it? Well, primarily with flexibility. I think which is evidenced by the number of new programs and offerings that we've introduced in 1987. The major one being our total vendor support offering. DG now offers to support service and support all products in an installation. And fans now have the much hoped for home run threat, one stop shopping. There are other programs also, like the volume terminal agreement, network service offerings, special bids that make our team more streamlined and the recently announced disaster recovery hot site backup. This team is not just treading water when it comes to developing new services, and it's one prepared to perform on a worldwide basis, as it's currently putting in place an improved international liaison office to ensure that all our strokes are used in competition around the world. Let's now move out to the swimming arena and for a report from our worldwide marketing and sales support swim team, led by Captain Brian Wood. Brian? Thanks, Dick. We're here at a practice session of the Service Marketing Swim Team. With me is the team captain, Brian Woods. Brian, what's the outlook for the team? We're favored to win. The team's been working on several new strokes, and it's clear we have the stamina both for the long haul and the quickness for the short sprints. Can you show us some of those moves, Brian? Sure. As you can see, the team's perfecting the vendor support stroke. With this stroke, we've been very successful in every international business area, and we look forward to more big wins with this in the future. I see the coach wants me in the pool. I'll be back in a few moments. 
Look at them go. They're moving through that water like real champs. They're kicking hard to support PCs and peripherals. It's clear that the customer wants one service vendor for their DG equipment and connected peripherals. And when customers make demands like that, it's sink or swim. And they're bending over backwards to deliver. That was a good performance, Brian. Do you think you can keep that kind of effort afloat? Well, not only will we keep that level up, but we're going to improve. We're working to add to our list of supported products, and once we've got those strokes mastered, we'll make sure the whole team is well aware of what we can do. Can you tell us what else you've planned? Sure. We're particularly proud of our efforts to be faster and more flexible in the pool when it comes to meeting special bids and requests for services that are not part of our standard policy. We've become much more aggressive in our discounting dives, and we're working to offer network and system contracts that provide complete solution support. Total account management, we call it. We've heard your warranties are a stroke of genius. Can you have the team give us a demonstration? Why, sure. This is a key stroke for the team folks. Critics have said that the warranties become waterlogged after only about 90 days. But the team is working to keep worldwide warranties on all new products gliding through the water for a year. The team seems to be doing quite well. The warranties are holding up. This team is headed for the gold for sure. Back to you, Dick. Thanks, Jan, for that insightful question. We now... We do have one final sport to report on today, and that's an event where everything really and truly comes together, where all prior efforts come to fruition, and where the run for the gold really matters. And that's out there with our accounts and with our customers. This team is made up of competitors from more than field engineering, and one that goes beyond the boundaries of nations. It's a team that includes members of sales, systems engineering, and field engineering. I just know that the cooperation among these groups will put us in the medal round every time. Such cooperation has already made for some big wins over the past year. In the U.S., for example, our Partnership for Success program, bringing field engineers and sales reps together in the selling process, generated nearly $15 million in incremental revenue for the business last year. Tom Moylan's crew in Birmingham, Michigan, generated $2 million worth and a branch headed by Gary Dixon in Charlotte, North Carolina, topped the $1 million mark. And Chester Plachet's team in Materia, Louisiana, recorded the most number of successful leads. It shows that how all of us can help generate business for the good of the entire Data General team. And in fact, Tom Westrick of Birmingham, Michigan, because of his success with Partnership for Success, became the first field engineer to be a member of the Million Dollar Club and he attended the conference in St. Thomas. But partnership goes far beyond incremental revenue. I really believe it's a philosophy about the way we manage and run our business. And it manifests itself in our approach to account management, which is absolutely necessary for proper selling to any customer, whether in New York, Seoul, Paris, Calgary, or Tokyo. With sales as the driver and with field engineering and systems engineering at the hub, our teams can pull together and experience the ultimate success, the thrill of victory. Now let's take a closer look at this new Olympian spirit, spirit as we have exclusive interviews with members of our outstanding crew of oarsmen from international sales and service teams, the epitome of what all athletes should be. Hi, I'm Brian Mellon of the sales team. I'm out here with my teammates Jerry Cromwell and Jim Wilson of the service team. Hey, wasn't Bob Tway supposed to be with us? Well, the last I heard, he was out on the golf links giving his son some golf tips. I guess when we told him we were going to practice our strokes, he thought we meant our golf swings. Well, what about everyone else? Like Van Der Zee from Holland and Suzuki from Nippon. Yeah, and that Canadian, Tom Ray from Thompson from Down Under. Are they going to show up? Those guys are always late. For all we know, they're probably just arriving in Jamaica for last year's Million Dollar Club. Why don't we get this interview over with and get back to some serious work? Back in the hotel lounge. Yeah, the Musso's getting impatient. Let me start, Dick, with some background. As some of your viewers may know, we were all runners before we took to the waters. 
I specialized in the 1500 meter run. Jim did the hurdles, and Brian used to shoot that damn pistol off at the start. Teamwork was important in the race, but we all had our separate parts to be concerned about. We had to run as fast as we could as individuals. Today, it's different. The sports environment has changed. We're not running our separate legs anymore. We're in the same boat. We're working for the same account as a team. This requires coordination and consistency, or we'll lose the race. That's why we've taken the account management approach. We can't just work to deliver our separate pieces. We have to work together and coordinate to deliver a joint package to our customers. Everyone is involved up front. We have to look at the race as a whole and design our strategy together. If we're going off on our own, we'll end up going around in circles and the race will get away from us. When unexpected currents hit us, we all need to be prepared and informed. From the service side, we need to make sure that the right service level will be provided. And once the customer has his equipment, we need to serve as the eyes and the ears at the site. From where I sit in the boat, I need to drive the process to make sure the account is in control, has the right products, and is getting what it needs. Things glide along pretty smoothly when we all work together. We all know what our part is. We all do that part. And we all work to make sure our part works with the efforts of our teammates, not against them. That way, we all win. Well, I'm not sure I'd bet on them at the upcoming Olympics, but I do know that the spirit of teamwork as reflected in that report is, uh, is something that is absolutely essential for us in Data General and in this division, and can only bring us to one place, and that is to the gold. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon.